Hi everyone, Russell here. So today I'm gonna show you how to add the SMB particle separator to your Honda Talon and make it work with the Jackson Racing Turbo Kit. If you don't have the Turbo Kit, I have a separate video on uh, showing you how to install it. So your first question might be, why do you need a particle separator? Well, in my opinion, it's an absolute must have if you're in dusty conditions. So if you're not familiar with how they work, they were originally developed for helicopters and it sucks the air in, the dirty air on the, the front side of this. And uh, there's an electric fan in there that's going to separate the dust. So it ejects 90 to 95% of the dust right out the back here and allowing clean air to go into your filter housing. So with my experience, uh, the Jackson Racing Turbo Kit, um, they mounted the air box right there above the shock. And I could only get three to 400 miles out of it uh, before uh, the filter needed to be cleaned. So keep in mind to clean this, um, it's recommended that you take about 24 hours. So you, you need to have that downtime or you need to have a second filter. So if you do buy a second filter, it was about $150 to have it delivered. It's, you know, $60 for the filter, $50 for the, the a foam sleeve, and like another $30 or $40 for shipping. So you can buy a second filter or I'm just going to go with the particle separator because I believe you'll be able to get 1,500 to 2,000 miles uh, with this type of setup in dusty conditions. So before I show you step by step on how to complete this project, there's just uh, uh, one item I want to bring to your attention and that's possible uh, uh, warranty issues. So. Um, if you haven't watched my interview with Jackson Racing a couple of months ago, I will put the link in the description below. So basically in this interview, they were saying how an accessory cannot void the warranty. And they were specifically talking about the Jackson Racing Turbo Kit cannot legally void the warranty that you have with Honda. So if you have the one year or the extended warranty, this kit cannot void, it, uh, void that warranty that you purchased or that you have. But it also kind of seems like a double standard from my perspective. And the reason I say that is because if you add an accessory to their turbo kit, they instantly void the warranty. So if you have like a slip on exhaust on your Talon, they're going to instantly void it. So before you complete this, you know, take that in, into consideration, call Jackson Racing, ask them as, if it's going to avoid the warranty. I don't want you to have additional um, issues. So just check into that for yourself. But um I don't want to uh, change the air filter every three or 400 miles. Um, I also don't want to worry about accidentally getting in water too deep and sucking water into the engine. So this is giving me an extra two feet of clearance and, uh, and you know, pumping clean air into your filter housing, I don't think is ever a, a bad thing. So um, I'm definitely going for it. As you can see, I've already done it. Um, I'm sure uh, Jackson Racing has already documented this and voided my warranty, but uh, hey, whatever. So we're here behind the rear passenger uh, seat above the rear tire. All right, we're going to remove this plastic piece. So you're going to have nine push rivets underneath. And then these two push rivets, which are basically right here below the joint, that you're going to need to remove. And then this piece will come out. So like I said, there's nine underneath, two on top for a total of 11. It's really honestly kind of a pain to take that out. And that's another reason I want to move the filter. Not only is it a dust vacuum down here, but it's a pain to access it and clean it. So I've already removed the turbo kit housing, but to get it out, of course, you have to unhook the hose clamp here. And then there's going to be a 10 millimeter uh, nut and bolt right there you have to remove. And if you installed the turbo kit yourself, you'll be familiar with this. And then the bracket also goes here on your shock bolt. So we're gonna take those two out and then remove the housing. All right, so here's the housing bracket. Um, you'll see there's going to be uh, four of these uh, bolts holding it in. So when you remove the four bolts, you're gonna basically take these two pieces off of the bracket, which you know line up with the triangle 
and the square. And I don't want to be negative all the time, but that was a good idea. That was very easy to, uh, to assemble when I put this together. All right, so once you remove these four bolts right there, you'll just have the, the bracket, uh, just this piece together. And I'll provide the link in the bottom, but basically I have two Axia alloys uh, with the M6 female um, piece on there. And, um, and then I did have to get some shorter bolts to go in there because the bolts that came in the kit will bottom out on your Axia alloys. So um, I got some shorter bolts and once you pull them out, you'll see what I'm talking about. And then uh, you'll see that the, you know, like this bolt is a little bit lower. This one's a little bit higher. So, you know, I just had to adjust the brackets to, to get the, um, this actually level. So just, just keep that in mind. And then the other thing that I did is when I put these into the Axie Alloys uh, clamp, um, I put Loctite on them. So you definitely don't want these working loose. So if you opt for the, the spare tire mount like I have, which I can also put the link in the description, um, one thing you're gonna run into is this this bracket is one and three quarter, and, and nearly all of Honda's uh, roll bars are two inches. So when you buy the factory kit, um, the clamps that come with it, you have two options. You can order a new one, a new clamp from Axia Alloys, and you know you would get the M8 uh, female threaded uh, bracket for that, and, and I can put the link in the description. Or I kind of farmer rigged it, and basically what I did is I made a shim for it. So these are the factory uh, ones for a two-inch bar. So uh, I found a, a pipe that had an inner diameter of uh, one and three quarter and an outer diameter of two. Cut it to the width of the bracket and then used it as a shim. And I put hundreds and hundreds of miles on it uh, uh, before I had the turbo kit and it never moved and it worked great. So I'm just going to leave it. But it is kind of a farmer rig. So if you want to do it a little better than I am, um, you can kind of work with the Axie Alloys clamps I'll put in the description. So one thing with the spare tire mount, it, it, it's barely wide enough to work. And then there's quite a bit of alignment to do. So you'll see kind of how I have it set up using the first hole. And then, you know, I'm at an angle coming down because basically you have to perfectly align uh, the outlet of the particle separator to go into the filter housing. And so when you come to the other side, um, You'll see, you know, it has to be perfect. And when I put the housing up there, I'll show you. But uh, um, just keep that in mind. So this is the, the three and a half inch hose that came with the, the kit for the Honda Talon. So basically what I did is uh, this is about two inches wide. Um, and this, this uh, rubber clamp right here just slips on and off of that hose. But I cut a piece of hose, uh, the, basically the exact width of this rubber clamp. So once once you have it cut, it'll look about like this. So you have the hose inside, inside of the clamp. Another reason I recommend getting the, the original Honda accessory particle separator is because it comes with this piece in the kit. Okay, so your talon is basically going to come with uh, this piece that you're gonna have to remove. So behind the passenger seat, you have two push rivets right there to remove and then three on the outside. So once you remove that, you can put this in. Okay, with the original kit, you didn't have to cut anything, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like after I cut it because you would see like red plastic right down to here. And I basically wanted to clear everything uh, uh, so it doesn't rub on the new hose and create a hole and, and you know ruin your engine. So I'll show you a picture of that real quick. Next, so we're going to remove the three uh, five millimeter Allen bolts uh, that's holding this together. So this is the end of the filter housing kit. And then I basically bought some of this bulb seal right here, automotive bulb seal. And uh, there's two different layers of adhesive. So I'm going to cut this to length and then apply this around um, the outside here. And keep in mind that, you know, I'm sure there's a better way to do this and uh, I'm still looking into that, 
uh, but this is kind of how I'm getting a near airtight seal so far. So I basically just kind of pulled these together and cut it at um, a slight angle. So when they meet up, um, there won't be a huge gap. All right, so there's a fairly tight connection there with those angle cuts. And this is basically about where I have it. And then I'm going to fold it over so the adhesive sticks on the outside kind of like that, on the inside and the outside. All right, then, then we're just going to gently kind of squeeze the, the rubber hose um, in and slide it in not to rip off that bulb seal. But that's what it will look like once you get it slid in. We'll slide that onto the particle separator. And we just want the particle separator barely on the inside so it doesn't really ref uh, re uh, restrict any airflow. And then two, this is where you can kind of li line it up. Make sure that gap here and here is equal. And that's where you can adjust, you know, these axial alloys brackets or the brackets for the particle separator. You can kind of see the angle I have that one at to get them perfectly lined up. All right, then we'll just uh, reinstall the three bolts, tighten those down, um, tighten down the hose clamp, these two clamps for it. And then, you know, just kind of ensure that the particle separator is parallel with the bar. And uh, keep in mind, you can also, if you don't have the rear panel, um, you can do all of this uh, um, where Honda intended it to be, which is on the bar up here or the bar down there. You can't really see it with my particle separator, but keep in mind, those will be two inch. So these Axia alloys would need to be uh, two inch instead of one and three quarter inch clamps. All right, so gently uh, feed the hose through. And what I did was just apply a little bit of WD-40 um, to the to the rubber seal uh, right there. And then just kind of uh, gently push and twist it, and it went in pretty darn good. And I will come down underneath. So we have the 45 here. Um, I opted for aluminum. Um, there's a bunch of different thicknesses. I went for the two uh, millimeter wall thickness, but um, this is just a three inch outer diameter, um, 45 degree angle. And I put a little bit of grease, as you can see, to slide it into here. And then we'll put clamps on both sides and clamp that up. So this is what it looks like assembled. As you can see, this is basically a straight line coming down into that 45. There's not really a bend at all. Um, I'll tighten up the clamps on both sides. I'm leaving this clamp to where I can tighten it up from the inside. So I won't have to remove this plastic cover again. I hope I never have to remove this plastic cover ever again. And uh, so we'll get this tightened up and the cover back on. So I have both of these tightened down. Um, I did position those clamps to where I can easily reach them uh, just by removing the, the cover in the back of the bed, just to check those and tighten them down. And then I do have a couple of straps around the metal intake tube here just to, to stabilize it. And uh, so I'm basically done here on the bottom side. So another reason I'm kind of rotting like, like this is if you go through brush or trees or anything, um, you know, it wouldn't take much for a branch or something to poke a hole in this. So I'm just kind of trying to limit the exposure, use my gas can as a protector, and, uh, you know, just kind of keep it safe. We definitely don't want any dust getting down into the turbo or the motor. So I would like to uh, send a special thank you to uh, Mark at, uh, with Desert Craft. Um, I'll uh, add his uh, website, um, phone number, and everything and uh, and yeah just if you want to complete this kit just let him know um, he did custom make this hose which turned out great um, you know airtight connector on there and everything and uh, so I did order the hose at four foot six so if you want to put it in a different location or a little bit longer than how I have it um, he'll make it to any size you need so the original particle separator kit comes with two velcro straps so I have one right there and then I just removed the bolt, um, and this was a bolt just like this that was already there. I just removed that, I think it's a, f a five or six millimeter, I can't remember, um, Allen. Took that out, um, and then on the Velcro strap, I just uh, used a razor blade, cut a little hole out, uh, put the bolt back in, 
and then so I can kind of secure that uh, with this Velcro strap. And that'll make it pretty st uh, solid the entire length. So here's the final product. Both, both hose clamps tightened down, um, but I placed those to where you can tighten them um, from the other side of this wall. So, uh, so I can you know check on them once in a while, even with the plastic cover on and not have to remove it. Um, comes up through here. This is what it looks like uh, with the Velcro strap through, uh, through the bolt that I showed you. Other Velcro strap and um, into the, the filter housing box. And this is what it looks like with my gas can on. There's actually a gap um, through there. You can't see it very well in the video. Um, there's about a, a quarter inch gap or more, so it won't be rubbing there. And then on the other side, um, the Velcro strap, which is doubled up right here, um, is actually up against the canister, just also to prevent any type of friction or, or wiring through the hose. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any better ideas or, or anything, um, or even questions on this install, feel free to write me. Um, I try my best to respond to everybody since I'm a small time YouTuber. It makes it a lot easier. So um, again, thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoy the channel, please consider subscribing. I think this is my 62nd or 63rd video. So during this virus time, if you have some extra time on your hands, feel free to look through them. Um, I have videos on how to install about $20,000 in accessories on there. So again, thank you and uh, see you next time.